In this edition of Impact, we explore some creative ways people are growing and cultivating their own food. One of the reasons why I'm here is because I practice self-liberation. And one of the things that I've done for a very long time is to save seeds. So we have our own fresh access to heirloom or organic indigenous food. We don't have to look outside of ourselves for nutrition or for access. We create our own access. But first, we look at what happens to our trash after it leaves our homes. Most of the stuff, most recyclables actually go back to China. Um, that's where most of the goods that we use in the U.S. are manufactured and that's where they're going to use it all again to make new products. Welcome to Impact. I'm Cherie Salgadillo. Food and trash are some of the essentials we manage in our day-to-day -day lives. In this episode, we reveal some of the issues we face for both. In our first story, we begin with the stuff we throw away. We follow the path of garbage trucks to a major landfill that is running out of space, and our Impact producer examines what is being done to solve this messy problem. Trash. Each of us generates it. Each of us disposes of it. But probably none of us gives it a second thought. Throughout the course of a day, the average American produces 4.4 pounds of trash. Los Angeles County is home to 10 million people. Put those two numbers together, and you've got a lot of trash. Each year, Los Angeles County disposes of 24 million tons of waste. And just to put it in perspective, that is enough trash to fill the Rose Bowl, not once, but 32 times in a year. In the greater Los Angeles area, residents and businesses generate massive amounts of trash every day. Each of us produces about one ton of solid waste per year. But with so many of us, where does it all go? Certainly not the Rose Bowl. The county itself generates currently about 30,000 tons of trash every day throughout the year. Robert Ferrante is the director of the Los Angeles County Sanitation Districts. He's in charge of making sure our solid waste is properly managed. That number is actually down. Since about 2005 it peaked and it dropped. A large part of that is due to the uh, recession uh, because a lot of the waste was related to construction. Still, the county has to deal with a lot of trash. By 2020, LA County will grow by another 1.7 million people. We are always running out of landfill capacity. Every day we're running out of landfill capacity. This is causing a great sense of urgency to find better and more efficient ways of dealing with our trash problem. Puente Hills Landfill is the second largest landfill in the United States. It can accept over 13,000 tons of trash per day and is sometimes called Garbage Mountain because of just how high the trash is piled. Puente Hills, like any landfill, is designed to do a couple of things. Prevent contamination of groundwater and capture explosive methane gas from rotting trash. It has the ability to uh, take the gas from the decomposing uh, refuse and use it for energy. It's one of the largest renewable energy plants off of landfill gas in the world. Uh, it generates 55 megawatts of power in total, enough for uh, a city of about 70 to 75,000 people. It is not only a place where trash is, is uh, environmentally taken care of, 
but also there's tremendous environmental benefits uh, by having uh, the power being generated from the uh, refuse. No amount of precautions and engineering can change the inevitable. Landfills, like Punta Hills, are reaching capacity. Los Angeles County can't bury its trash forever. Can I help you? With my help you with your homework. Uh -huh. well, then, we're going to make lasagna for dinner. The Chahals live in Cerritos, California. The family recently began separating their trash and recyclables when Cerritos began using a three-bin collection system. Well, I mean, sometimes, like the Sprouts is pretty good. I like to shop there. In our house, most of our trash is generated here in the kitchen. So that's kind of created uh, awareness in our house, I think, since we had those, those different uh, uh, trash bins because I, I never knew you know, how much recycled trash we were just throwing away. Okay. We're recycling out two or three times before we empty the trash out. Cartons and cartons and boxes and cereal boxes and lasagna packaging and yeah, yeah, that's what it is, the juice and this and that. Look at that, it's all carton, can, container. Reducing the amount of trash we produce would save us a lot of money in solid waste management. California legislators saw this coming and passed a bill that would make cities and counties find alternatives for their trash. This bill is called AB 939. AB 939 is an assembly bill that was passed over 20 years ago that requires diversion of waste from landfills. And it really is the uh, main driver for promoting recycling in the state of California. It's led uh, all the cities, municipalities have to meet, currently they have to meet a 50% diversion requirement. So what that means is 50% of the waste that they generate has to be recycled in some way. The county and sanitation districts have created sophisticated ways to divert waste from landfills. One example is this recycling facility. We're at the Pointe Hills MRF today. Um, a MRF is a materials recovery facility and what we do here is we take waste from the commercial industry, so businesses, manufacturers, and we bring it in here, we pull out the recyclables, you can see the recyclables right here, right next to me. Um, and then the remaining waste, we sort that out as well, and then we take the waste to the landfill. We've got bales of all of our recycled materials here. We recycle every kind of plastic, all kinds of paper. Um, and so here we're looking at cardboard. Um, right over here as we continue on, there's, there's all types of paper over here. Um, and further along here, you can see that we're getting into some of the plastics. And then with the film, you can see this is our clear plastic film and then our mixed film. So there's different colors and things in there. And all of that material is recycled. So here is where the, the trucks all come in. This is called a tipping floor. They unload here. And based on the kind of material they had is where we asked them to unload. On the tipping floor, trash gets sorted. Everything that can be recycled is compacted into a bale. That way, it can be shipped to a recycler. Whatever is left gets loaded back onto a truck and is dumped at the adjacent landfill. If all goes well, it's less than 50% of the original load. The Puente Hills landfill, a lot of people know it as a landfill, but it's also one of the largest recycling facilities. So these bales are all gonna be sent off to a recycler. It's gonna pick them up and then send them off to someone who's going to use them. Most of the stuff, most recyclables actually go back to China. Um, that's where most of the goods that we use in the U.S. are manufactured and that's where they, they need our plastics and our paper and they're going to use it all again to make new products. California exported $2.1 billion worth of waste and scrap to China in 2009. That was more than 20% of everything we exported to China. It's our second biggest export to the Golden Dragon. For most cities, they have gone through to a three bin system where you have trash, recyclables, and green waste. And that works for most of the Southern California cities that people are able to do it. Because what you'll see 
in most cases, the best or the most cost effective and most efficient way to separate out recyclables is at the source when you're generating them. More trash generated. Recycle it. Recycle it. Recycle it. No. Why not? It's so cheesy and yuck. See, this is the dilemma. This is going in the trash. This is the dilemma. So, start recycling. This is bathroom trash. Should I throw away? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Should I put away stuff in there that's recyclable or should I just chuck it in the trash? Okay, like here's a shampoo bottle. Make sure I rinse it out and. Yeah. I should? Yeah, rinse it and put it in the recycle. That's a lot of work. No, but you know what I'm doing. I'm just going to chuck it in the recycling like this. What a dilemma! <laughs> And this dilemma is one that policymakers face on a huge scale. In what ways will our county continue to recycle? Where will we put the remaining 50 percent that doesn't get recycled? We talked about the landfills and the fact that uh, it's very difficult to site new landfills in L.A. County. Uh, no new landfill has been sited here in many years, and that's why uh, we've been looking at remote disposal for waste. Los Angeles will soon export its waste problem to an abandoned gold mine north of the Mexican border. It will send up to 8,000 tons of trash a day. With a waste by rail system, the refuse will have to be put into cargo containers, loaded by crane onto a uh, train, and taken over 200 miles out to the um, landfill, the Mesquite Regional Landfill in Imperial County. From there, it will have to be offloaded and then transported to the kind of the working face area and dump. Setting up this elaborate system will cost about $500 million. The waste by rail system is obviously, it's more expensive to take waste outside of the county. So it's about three times more expensive to, uh, to dispose of refuse through a waste by rail system. Currently, it costs $38 to dump a ton of trash at the Puente Hills landfill. The district expects the cost to reach $80 per ton once the waste by rail is operated. Enormous costs are associated with these programs, costs that could be minimized if we reduced our waste. Conversion technologies is a very fascinating topic because uh, we view that as one of the strategies that we have for handling um, solid waste. What you would have normally taken into a landfill, right, now you're converting into electricity or biofuels, so you're, you're converting this liability now into a resource that you can sell and make money out of. As recently as September 2010, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger vetoed legislation that would have raised the diversion requirements from the current 50 percent all the way up to 75 percent. Many were against this legislation. Among them, the county's own Pat Pirano and the Solid Waste Management Committee. What more can we do, right, to get to 75 percent? That's why we do want to get credits for conversion technology, okay, and that's, that's the very important step to advancing conversion technologies, is to make sure that the state is giving us diversion credits for waste that's going to conversion. What Pirano is referring to is outlined in Assembly Bill 222. The bill was rejected by the Senate Environmental Quality Committee. Although local governments may use conversion technologies to keep trash out of landfills, they won't get credit for it because of the way the current laws are written. Los Angeles County continues to grow and become more dense. Addressing our waste becomes more and more important. Not only will the future of trash depend on residents and businesses cooperating on the many local and state programs, but also on any future legislation.